Hey there, my name's Jesse, and you're listening to the Deep Lore Boys Podcast, where me, Matthew, and Jackson delve into the random, rare, and often ridiculous pieces of human history. Aliens were discovered uh, rather close to home. Jackson, are the crystal skulls real? They actually are. Uh, it's probably the lizard people, honestly. That's Impressive. what I'm saying. It's a possibility, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Deep Lore Boys podcast. It, uh, it's been a little bit. We've had a bit of a hiatus. This is classic behavior for uh, content creators, and it turns out we are no different. I won't be playing a ukulele and doing an apology or anything, but um, my laptop has been gone, and that is the primary editing tool for the podcast. So without it, we have been crippled, even though we've got like two or three episodes worth of footage in the docket. Again, we have had a drought of clout. Yes, but... really. You know, <laughs> we were <laughs> the clout. There's no excuse. Please give us clout. I need views. It. I base my <laughs> social value on the YouTube clout. <laughs> Off of the YouTube clout. My clout. purpose is driven by... Uh... So this has been a uh, wild, like, couple weeks and it's months. Been, it's been a funky time. Be, uh... Yeah, in the time that we've been gone, aliens became real. We did that. Oh, yes. That was us. <laughs> that was... <laughs> that was... <laughs> That's what we Earth's were doing, mightiest guys. defenders, <laughs> you know, left the battlefield. So I'm sure everyone's heard about this at this point. Uh, Congress did a hearing yesterday about aliens. It wasn't a whistleblower. That's what most people keep calling this um, David Grush. I should specify, He's... too, the hearing was not expressly about aliens. Uh, it no, was no. about unidentified flying objects, or now uh, UAPs, unidentified aerial phenomena, as they've been called, which are... Proving to be a very real thing, whatever they are, whether it's aliens or something else. To me, it's a lot more interesting to think of them as like national security threats, which is how they're viewing them and not just wagga wagga bingo alien. <laughs> like, <laughs> I feel <laughs> like it's... Wagga wagga bingo aliens. You know, that's what they are, dude. They walk and they go... Wah, 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 wah. So basically, to sum up what's going on, uh, the government, a couple of years ago, I don't remember how long ago they started really uh, cracking down on UAPs. But they, they basically admitted, yeah, we've got some weird unidentified stuff flying around. We don't really know what it is. And it's verifiable by radar, by camera footage, by pilots' testimonies. It's not like hippy-dippy, you know, Farmer Joe says that he saw a light in the sky. This is actual, like, hey, military I mean, personnel. you got to trust Farmer stuff. Joe. Well, yeah, not saying Farmer Joe, you know, is a, you know. Is a liar or anything, but... Yeah, there's been real unidentified aerial phenomena and what appears to be craft moving in ways that just defy material science as we understand it. It was a little bit wild. The big one that came up, the one that I would really like to go into, is the the Tic Tac. Oh, yes. The, tic, the 2004 Tic Tac incident. As specified in the Congress hearing, it is not Tic Tac like the, uh, the app. It is Tic Tac like <laughs> the uh, Did they tic- say that in the hearing? He does. Yes, yeah, they, they did. did they that. did say that. They, they had to specify for the uh, the confused children growing up on a uh, subway surfers videos. Yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> no, actually, <laughs> I'm surprised they didn't have subway surfers playing at the hearing. This object was spotted back in 2004, right off the coast of California in the Pacific Ocean. There was an aircraft carrier that was doing Navy test flights, and they were already called to multiple anomalous vehicles over the horizon. Um, and they were detecting pings and like certain things were coming up on their radar. They saw this white pill-shaped object, which is why they called it the Tic Tac. It submerged underwater, came out of the water, and then rapidly went like up into space, came back down a little bit, and then disappeared. They don't know exactly where it went. They did see it come out of the water. They said it descended 80,000 feet in less than a second and was able to stop in midair. The way that it moved was impossible for it to be like a man-made object or anything like that they said it completely broke the laws of physics that we could understand i mean there's there's yeah that's the case with a lot of these craft not just specifically the tic tac incident um most of these are making like immediate right turns in the air like 90 degree turns and stuff doing things that just our aircraft don't have the capability of doing a legitimate concern would be that it's another government experimenting with new kinds of craft that's something that's like, yeah, if there's another country making stuff like that, they are way beyond. They are way, 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 way. I, it's probably the lizard people, honestly. That's what I'm saying. 
It's a possibility, guys. It's a possibility. Yeah, we can't rule it's anything the lizard out. Lizard people. Supposedly, there were actually a couple of Tic Tacs, and we only caught the one, I think, on footage. But there were a few of them that they were picking up. And as they began to get closer, it began to jam all of their signals, and they weren't able to use things like radar yeah. and. Dude, yeah, I was just going to mention like that. that. Um, I'm trying to find his name right now. It was one of the main uh, witnesses there, but he he claimed that his aircraft's um, capabilities were disabled by the, the UAP. He was asked, would you have been able to defend yourself if it came to that? And he said, absolutely not. These things are, they move better than us. They disrupt our weapons capabilities. There was no way. Um, some people have claimed that it was a weather balloon. <laughs> that weather balloon was zipping, man. <laughs> Dude, it, it was had going. places to be. How do we know it wasn't a bird? <laughs> no, darn! Like, oh, I didn't think I of that. Just, I just wanna wanna <laughs> raise this theory here. What if there was a bird that had like eaten like fermented berries or something and was like really <laughs> tripping out? And it just got zooted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was okay. on that Zaza. I just man. have to say, like, I don't know. I don't want to jump to well, any you conclusions. You had those geese that almost caused the nuclear fallout back yeah, in Cold War. No, here's the thing. People will laugh at me. They'll call me silly. But are you honestly going to think that, like, Glorby the alien came all the way from Proxima Centauri just to jump up and down in the sky and then go home? Like, are we actually saying that that's more likely than a bird got zonked out and just started going super fast? Like, when you put it like that, I'm just going to say, suddenly the bird sent out an EMP (laughs) and disrupted the fighter jets radar and weapon systems, too. Hey, it was a very powerful bird. (laughs) It was a very (laughs) last of its kind, man. Hey, yeah, this is, dude, the Tombstone Thunderbird is on another <laughs> level. Dude, the Tombstone Thunderbird must have had some bad pineapples or something. <laughs> I, I guess, don't know. dude, this. <laughs> dude, do, do you think he, like, you think he, like, inflated himself and that's why he, like, it was, like, pill shaped? He just, like. Yeah, maybe he just, like, swelled up and then. Yeah. Maybe that's all it is. Maybe dinosaurs aren't extinct. Oh. <laughs> Maybe it's a pteranodon. So the thing about these is that they are real quantifiable incidents, and they're real enough that the government has taken notice. And one of the things that they said at the uh, conference yesterday was this is a threat to national security. And I mean, honestly, yeah, it's kind of the same sort of thing as trying to float in their balloon into our airspace back yeah. a couple months ago. Uh, we can't just let random things, whatever they are, be flying around in our skies. It's it's a threat that's a to bit of security. A, that's a bit of a concern. Um, so whether this is, I mean, I've heard every theory from, you know, aliens being the big one to misunderstood weather phenomena, all kinds of stuff. It's important that we figure out what it is and understand it. For years, even I've thought it's just been some like crazy guy in his backyard claiming to have seen something for the sake of like clout or just like trying to get attention. But it's not looking like that at this point. It's looking very much like these are real threats. No, and most most, you know, UFO sightings traditionally are exactly that. But all it takes is for one of these to be something legitimate and you have a problem. You have yourself an alien. Well, so that's something that to me, has raised more concern than anything. Kind of public knowledge at this point that there's been several hundred UFO sightings in the past uh, 50 years. Those sightings, what kind of bothers me the most is that there hasn't been a method of reporting them, like really at all. And those who did kind of get associated as, you know, tinfoil hat alien conspiracy theorist even if they've seen something that is a genuine problem and should be reported, if you see something like a weird object floating in the sky, it should probably be brought to the attention of somebody. But they wouldn't do it. But for they fear wouldn't of do it because yeah, threatened. they didn't want to feel like they were some silly alien guy. We could talk about David Grush. We didn't really cover him and what he's claiming. He's the most interesting piece of the meeting. Okay, so yeah, David Grush, uh, he's an Air Force officer, or was an Air Force officer, was a, you know, very high level um, intelligence official uh, for working for the Department of Defense. Very, very up there. Okay, like very time. This is when people talk about like the secret sneaky government agent guy. He's one of them. Yes. Yeah, he is about as close to the men in black as one can get. And he is the main sort of cause for this whole ufo 
stir in recent days. During his time in the military and in the in the government, it came to David Grush's attention that there was a lot that the government wasn't telling everybody and he would get bits and pieces from people who were higher in power or had different uh, intelligence clearance than him. And he didn't initially believe the claims. He said that he sat on a lot of the data that he got for about four years, making sure that it was all legitimate before he decided to blow the whistle. And now that he has, he's saying uh, we've recovered non-human, non-terrestrial craft and that we have non-human biologicals that have come with it and that one person has died during an encounter with things, whatever they are. He said in the hearing yesterday that there were some things that he was not permitted to say in a public setting, but could disclose in a private setting. And so I believe within five days of the meeting, he's going to be uh, getting together with people and spilling the beans in a private setting. The, uh, the non-human pilots or dead pilots, something I thought about was these crafts, the amount of Gs you would have to experience to pilot these things would be completely something that a human would never be able to live through. It's a squirrel. <laughs> Dude, have you seen the like squirrel spinner things? They can yeah, take a lot of Yeah, it has G's. to be a squirrel. So what I'm thinking about is, is it possible? Now, this is just as wild as aliens, but is it possible that there's a country like China or Russia or any other very sophisticated country that's engineering like synthetic life to fly a craft? It wouldn't even have to be intelligent. It would just have to be able to push a couple buttons or something. You know, if you believe that another government is the one creating these machines that can do these things that, like, our wildest tech can't do, then I guess, yeah, why not? Like, if they can build that. If we can do that, then why can't there just be aliens? Like, that to me is so far-fetched. Glorby flying in from another planet just sounds more likely. Here's, for for those of you who find that alarming, because, you know, it, it would be alarming to find out that there are aliens among us. Do, 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 do. <gasps> Here's a thought. Misinformation. Am I right? So back in the 80s, there was a guy named Paul Benowitz, and he uh, lived near a, uh, a military facility and saw lights in the sky at night. And so he went and reported it to them. And what he was actually seeing was... Uh, the government testing their own new kinds of aircraft because this was right around the time of the Cold War and whatnot. And because those aircraft were classified and the government didn't want you know news of that getting out, they lied to him and told him that it was aliens and fueled this belief that it was aliens. So they would tell him all kinds of things about the extraterrestrials and how to uh, avoid them and you know now you're caught up in this mystery, you know you gotta gotta stay quiet about it, make sure they don't mind control you this and that. And it was all completely just made up. But he went to his grave, like going insane, raving about aliens, thinking that they were real. When in reality, it was completely just made up. And it's not the first time that the government has done that. Uh, I believe at some point in history, we even said or claimed that we had recovered pieces of a UFO as a deterrent to the Russians. Like, hey, we've got some super advanced craft from space. What do you got? And that was oh, yeah. completely, you know, BS, too. No, so we've done stuff like that before with a lot of this. This is a shaky time in history. There's lots of drama going on in the world. Who knows? Maybe something like that is happening again, and it's all just made up. Um, I I don't want to discredit the honest people that have come forward talking about what they've seen, but maybe things like David Grush being the whistleblower here and saying, "Oh, the government's got craft, and we have biologicals." He could completely be working for them. We don't know. Yeah, that is true. Another concern that people had yesterday was um, with the uh, enemy countries is what if they were to get one and find a way to reverse engineer it or find a way to fix it up and then use it themselves? The threat that that could cause. Yeah. Because um, like it seems to be that if these are aliens that are th flying these things around, they appear to be fairly peaceful. They appear to not want an issue well, with humans. Again, I still think jumping to aliens is a very big conclusion. Right. It, so it could really be other things. No it idea. could technically be other countries. I find it, it could be nothing. Would be... It could be a complete hoax. What if it's not an alien? What if it's actually like somebody else completely that nobody's ever thought of? What if we're like, they must be from another planet, but it's actually like, I don't they're know. from within the earth. Yeah, they're like an underground they're from alien. 
yeah what if it's something like that or what if it's like a lizard there's not enough evidence at all to say you know what we're looking at here but the government as far as we can tell as far as we've been told is spotting some weird things in the sky that seem to defy most explanations that come to mind we don't know what they are but they are a threat to national security and we should figure out what they are because you know, we don't want other countries floating spy balloons or anything else over our airspace. Dude, okay, here's the thing, though. Like, so if there's an alien, it's probably going to need to eat, okay? Because eating food is right. universal among all life forms. So that'd be really messed up. But maybe it's a robot alien, or maybe it's not even made of something we know. Who knows what Glorby is? Okay, so say that he needs to eat. Like, where are we taking him? The poor guy, if I was an alien where? and landed on a planet, all the humans are going to be like, I want to talk to Glorby, no me. I want to see him. What's he up to? Instant celebrity. Like, bro could not get a second of peace. He'd be trying to go to the nearby McDonald's and grab a bite to eat, and he'd be swarmed. Like, it'd be awful. Well, okay, so what would be, what would be a good food to feed Glorby? Red well, Bull. Make him, like, some <laughs> Red oh, Bull. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that's exactly what his body is Dude, just give him well. a Red Bull and some pancakes, and he'll be set for the day. Dude, I give mean, him mac and cheese. Dude, no, no, not even mac and cheese, just pasta. It's just like, straight just, noodles. Have you ever met someone that doesn't have pasta? Yeah, like, <laughs> I feel like the best place to go would be Five Guys. Oh, that is true. Simply mm. because Five Guys, you know, it, to represent America in a nutshell, I feel like Five Guys is, is pretty good. But also, it's so outrageously expensive that half of his fans couldn't even eat there anyway. So they just have to <laughs> Glorby leave, fans waiting outside five guys. <laughs> all right. So all the recent uh, buzz around, you know, aliens and stuff like that has really gotten people, you know, hyped up. But what if I told you that this exact thing happened almost 200 years ago? Aliens were discovered uh, rather close to home, uh, just on the moon, you know, the nearest <laughs> celestial body to us. And this wasn't just some random, you know, gabagooby little funny guy. No, no, they found, I mean, bison, goats, unicorns, bipedal tailless beavers. Um, <laughs> and of course... Bro, they had everything up there. <laughs> of course, the great Vespertilio Homo. Uh, or the bat people. Bro, they had the whole island of misfit toys up there. They had, they had them all. <laughs> you see, they built an incredible telescope. By they, I mean... Um, Nobody, them. because it <laughs> wasn't actually yeah. constructed. What do you mean, Sir was John a Herschel? People that they said like built the telescope, or was it just? It like, was yeah, attributed to it. yeah. It was attributed to Sir John Herschel. Yeah, apparently Richard Adams Locke decided while he was working for the Sun in nineteen in eighteen thirty five. That, the uh, Sun was he, a newspaper in New yeah, York. Yeah, the Sun was a yeah, newspaper. He decided that they needed a real, a real hitter, you know, a real good topic. So why not just completely lie <laughs> <laughs> and make up the most outlandish, <laughs> bizarre topic? So the newspaper article said that they had invented, or rather Sir John Herschel had invented, uh, an immense telescope of an entirely new principle. So super mega telescope, way smarter oh, yeah. than you, like way more complicated than you Crazy. could possibly It's like H.P. Lovecraft level wild. Yeah, super mega. And uh, they used that to spy on the moon. And turns out there was a lot going on up there. Bison, goats, unicorns, bipedal tailless beavers. That seems a little <laughs> random. And uh, bat people that built temples. There were trees, <laughs> oceans, and beaches. And um, yeah, I, I mean, quite the little utopia. Something else that's funny to me is they mentioned the bipedal tailless beavers. Except when you look at their illustrations of what the moon looked like, they, they Not never once came up. do I see a bipedal tailless beaver. Also, what would that even be? Like, so something with buck teeth that walks on two legs but doesn't have the iconic beaver It's tail? such a specific, like... That sounds like just a woodchuck, but it's still <laughs> on two legs. No, I really do love the artwork that came out of this, though. Like, I hope we can put yeah, some there's up on some the screen real and nice... kind of show. Like, there's some incredible drawings. There is no way people believe this. 
There was I don't know, man. In eighteen thirties New York City. If this is what the leading kinda... scientists of the day knew, I mean, what are they really gonna say? Like and this was also believable, uh, because a reverend actually named Thomas Dick <laughs> was the the great philosopher of the era, apparently. Oh no. Um, and he, and said he it was claimed believable? he was known as the Christian philosopher. Uh, oh and boy. he claimed that based on his computations that the universe had exactly 21 trillion 891 billion 974 million 404,480 inhabitants that's just in our solar system <laughs> in our solar not the system. universe in our solar just, system dude that's not even possible no he said that the moon alone contained 4 billion 200 million people well no wasn't that a legitimate thought back in the day was that the other planets in our solar system could also yeah, have life everybody believed a... like up until like the 30s and 40s people believed that all the planets had life on them because they really had no way of viewing them up closely or anything like that oh so that's why this was more believable okay I guess we should get to the actual story too because we've covered kind of the the fake version of reality that the sun published. But um, the story was that uh, the article authorship was attributed to Richard Adams Locke, a reporter working for the sun. And um, there are other people who are credited as helping with it. It says, assuming that Locke was the author, his intentions were probably to create a sensational story that would increase sales of the sun um, and to ridicule some of the more extravagant astronomical theories that had recently been published. For instance, the guy who claimed that the solar system had 29 trillion inhabitants or 21 yeah trillion. i think he was trying to like poke fun at stuff like that the degree to which the hoax increased the paper's circulation has certainly been exaggerated in popular accounts of the event says wikipedia it was not discovered to be a hoax for several weeks after its publication and even then the paper did not issue a retraction so when it was discovered to be a hoax the papers were just like eh they left it in didn't even bother following it up. <laughs> Wait, Edgar Allan Poe, upon hearing this, claimed that it was a plagiarism from one of his books. He was mad. Oh, man, oh he that... thought that they were copying him? Yeah, because apparently he wrote a book about people who went to the moon with a balloon. Oh, and his editor at the time was Richard Locke. The man who published oh the, oh so it oh. was it was yeah a, so then it probably was legitimate grounds for him to say that yeah okay so it wasn't just him coming out of nowhere Herschel who was Herschel was he the guy that was yeah he's Herschel the guy that was, was the credited guy who was as having the telescope attributed yeah yeah this was a guy who did nothing that had to do nothing with it. to do with it they just decided he did can you imagine having to explain to all these people that's not real just like break their <laughs> heart well he said initially he thought it was pretty cool and like played along because. He said that his <laughs> real observations could never be as exciting, which I mean, even nowadays, NASA's observations could never be as exciting as this unless they legitimately yeah. found bat people chilling on Neptune or something. But still, like, can you imagine? I, I kind of, pardon me, kind of wants to just come up with something completely random and then be like, well, I didn't see it. Like, Jesse saw it. And then, like, just everyone just starts asking you. Like, <laughs> and I'll just be like, yeah, totally. Like, to make this up is one thing, but then to, like, just they immediately just say, like, hey, John else. Herschel saw it. Like, it no, him. he didn't. Like, he was he was the one who saw it. Go ask him. And it's just like, huh? <laughs> this is, like, the same thing as me being, like, like building something and then me just saying, like, yeah, Joe Biden built it. Like yeah, that's literally what it was. Like, like they like, made yeah. it up and said that he did it. Um, Could you imagine being ever... him and just being like, "What? No, I didn't build this." Like, wait a second. So they still they just went further. Like I guess one in a hole put down the shovel, but they did not hear. Uh, the mm -hmm. author said that the sun set fire to the observatory. Yeah, the sun shined through it and it burned it. Oh, That's yeah. what happened. They didn't even admit that it wasn't there. They just said that the telescope had burned up, so they couldn't yeah. That was see their excuse: was that the telescope was so powerful it like burned itself with the sun, like a magnifying glass, so they couldn't get that's a good look at funny. the moon again. Well, that's the interesting thing, though, is like you know, with our um, 
21st century knowledge, we're like, well, why don't they just send a rocket up there and look at that? Like, <laughs> and this day, like, they had no method of even slightly beginning to do that. See, the cool thing about this is, you know, if this came out nowadays, it'd be lame, but this was the 1830s. So this was like a revolutionary idea. And aliens oh, yeah. were not, they didn't have the same like flying saucer, little green men, we come in peace stigma attached to them. It was still like a brand new idea. Uh, so it's all very original and very weird. And it's cool to see like how they how they imagined aliens. Yeah. I mean, aliens have been a concept for a while, but it's cool to see oh, yeah. this was before they kind of had shaped. Jackson, are the crystal skulls real? Uh, so they actually are. Get what? this. Uh, so Indiana Jones is not completely inaccurate here. There are crystal skulls. That of course do exist, but that's that's about as real as they get. They don't oh, belong boy. to aliens; they belong to dwarves. Um, lots mm. of people believe that the crystal skulls can produce miracles or kill you. Um, I guess killing you is a miracle. It, it you know, spontaneous <laughs> death could be a miracle. I, mean, I, I guess I mean, it could be. Yeah. I mean, it's sort of a bad miracle. It's I, yeah, it's I, sort of a, a stinky miracle there. Uh, actually, Anna Mitchell Hedges the founder of the skull or the woman who claims she found the skull in South America actually said it could cure cancer. Yeah. Mm. It could cause visions and cure cancer and that she once used its magical properties to kill a man. Oh, she also claimed to have seen a premonition of the JFK assassination with the skull. So it's got oh. a wide variety of uses. So these skulls started turning up in the uh, mid to late 19th century in Germany. They, a lot of like the rumors around them said like, oh, they're these Mesoamerican, like they came from Peru, they came from Brazil or Central America and stuff like that. But as people have begun to look into them, uh, it looks more like they actually were just crafted in Germany. The craftsmanship that's on them doesn't exactly match the craftsmanship of the um, the native groups at these times when they were dated from. That's because it was made by a dwarf. That's what uh, I said. The dwarves those came German from South American dwarves. You know how they are. Uh, so, I mean, <laughs> that, that's, on. I mean, that's uh, my pitch. Uh, sure. Say what I you, mean, will. you don't think the lizard people were tied into these in any way? No, no, no. That was a different instance. I think these were dwarves. All right. So there are really, um, three or four crystal skulls that have really appeared. Three notable ones and a fourth one that's kind of dodgy. All right. So the, uh, the first one that I'm going to go into is the Mitchell Hedges skull. This one was supposedly discovered in 1924 by Anna Mitchell Hedges, the adopted daughter of a British adventurer. Supposedly, she found it in a, um abandoned temple. So the skull is made from a block of clear quartz. It's about the size of a small human cranium. The lower jaw is detached. And in the early 1970s, it came under the temporary care of Frank Dorland, a freelance art restorer it looks like he said it could be up to twelve thousand years old so yeah his his studies on it made it look really believable um they were able to do some more testing on it and it revealed evidence that the crystal had been worked with a high speed hard metal rotary tool coated in a hard abrasive such as diamond okay so that's not great evidence <laughs> um, for it being genuine no that mm. makes it look very much ungenuine unless you want to believe that native groups in mesoamerica had access to high speed no diamond they tools. didn't but the dwarves did they had a diamond pickaxe with efficiency five. Oh, oh it okay. did say it was coated in a hard abrasive such as diamond yes diamond pickaxe with wow. efficiency five all it took so it looks like the crystal skulls, including the Mitchell Hedges skull, um, are pretty much, it doesn't look good. It doesn't look good for the believers. There's also on Wikipedia here, the British Museum skull, which is in the British Museum. There's the Paris skull and the Smithsonian skull, but all of these are either confirmed fakes or pretty much fake. Yeah. Uh, so someone just dropped off a skull at the Natural History Museum in uh, 1992 they just sort of like mailed it to them. <laughs> so some guy just mailed them a fake crystal skull. I was like, have yeah, at um, it. they apparently have displayed it since then, but they've displayed it as being a fake. They, they no longer like they don't they point it as, it as just a... some guy. Just <laughs> look, dropped look at this phone. thing. We got in the mail. Someone <laughs> airdropped me this. <laughs> like, look at this cool thing, guys. <laughs> <laughs> According to the author, I'm going to botch this pronunciation. Drunvalo Melchizedek. 
He says that he came across several indigenous Mayan descendants and they all had crystal skulls or like they would use them at ceremonies and stuff. Hmm. It's believed that uh, if you combine all 13 of the mystical crystal skulls, it will basically cause 2012. We have to do it. <laughs> so we, guys, we have to try it. Do not unite the crystal skulls at 3 a.m. <laughs> but if I look up crystal skull and go to shopping, there are thousands. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah, it's a big I, It's going to be impossible to bring all 13 of the real ones together. Like, unless we have, like, some, like, I don't know, supernatural sonar device. Like, I, I don't know how to pull it off. So, yeah, these things basically just are some goofy uh, hoaxes that turned up in the 30s and people really liked them. And honestly, I don't blame them. I want them to be real. They are real. That's There's nothing real or not real about them. Regardless of their origin, they are still skulls made of crystal. I mean, that that's are, cool. That, like, that, that yeah. They are real. They're just not made by the people they say they were made by. I guess but the like, lore isn't real. L- literally, they sit there, bury them in the ground for like 2,000 years, and suddenly it will be real. Oh, like, you're right. That, that's like... <laughs> <laughs> you're right. Hey again, it's Jesse. Hope you enjoyed this episode of the Deep Lore Boys podcast. If you are a truly epic fan of the podcast, a true enjoyer of the deep lore, consider sharing this episode with a non-reptilian friend of yours. You can find more of our stuff on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, and we even have an Instagram. Jackson runs it. He posts some goofy memes sometimes. Go check it out. Until next time, I hope your day is nothing short of interesting. Take care. I'm going to go post that one on Twitter.com.